Welcome, everybody. Uh, as you can see, my name is Leonardo. I think I have two big challenges in this session. One is to keep you awake at the end of the day, and the second one to talk about SAFE. That can be very controversial. Some people like, some people don't like much. And the organizers put me in the big room where the exit doors are over there, so it's very hard to run. You know, I'm a bit afraid. But let's see how it goes, huh? Ah, there are two exit doors here. I have to ensure they are open. But let's see. So let's start. Let's see if it works. Uh, a bit of context. Uh, I'm coming, even though Brazilian I just said, I'm coming from Dublin. Uh, it's my third year, third year here. Um, nowadays in Dublin, I'm focused on consulting, so I do public training, uh, go to organizations and help them out to uh, be more efficient. efficient efficient, uh, effective, improve quality, improve culture, and all of those four pillars that I work with, regardless of the framework that I use. Some companies I'm gonna use Scrum, others Kanban, others even they are using SAFE and I help them out with SAFE. So I am not too tied to the means, but more to the problems. Um, the examples that I'm going to share here are basically from three years that I worked in two different organizations, financials, and uh, I'm pretty sure I would bet that 90% or more of you here have used their services or even have one of the products in your pocket right now, for sure. But I won't mention names. I'm, not, I'm no longer there, so I, know that I can't do that, GDPR, but maybe you know, without mentioning names, you're going to know. Um, this year, I became a, a safe program consultant for business reasons. The consultancy that I'm working right now sent me to a, a safe training to become safe certified and uh, start being able to provide trainings. But what I want, one thing, one thing that I really want to ensure here is I'm not selling safe at all. Okay, I'm gonna really share some learnings and experiences that I had. Some were good, some may not be that good, and also some uh, thoughts about the framework. And that, that, that's the theme today, okay? So the first question is, why should we scale? I'm focused on the why, but I would ask if, if we should really scale, right? Should we scale in a case like that where we have a lot of teams? I already gave the answer. If we have a lot of teams, doesn't mean that we should start thinking in scale something, right? If they are different, they work in different products, they don't have dependencies, they're working different value streams and so on, we don't need to scale. But instead, according to SAFE, we have to start thinking in scale whenever we have some structure where we have strategy, the C level of the company, big companies, programmers, directors, in terms of structure, the roles I'm saying here, uh, C-level, directors, and then teams of teams. In other words, we have like a big structure in front of us, and we want to keep alignment across the strategy and the operations. But to produce value, to deliver our products, our solutions, I need the value streams go from this to there, and I'm gonna have dependencies across different teams, departments. You may argue, but yeah, if we have dependencies across departments, we may have to have silos. We're going to discuss about that. But uh, going back to the safe, it's pretty much what they advocate for. So if we have our value streams, there will be dependencies, and uh, our value stream will, will uh, involve different groups of people, per se. Okay? Um, and, by the way, we have crossed that cross dependencies, I just answered that. If I have cross dependencies, then it's a moment of how we can work together in order to deliver value. What is SAFE? Show of hands, how many of you have heard about SAFE? Most. Keep hands up if you have worked in an environment trying to adopt SAFE. Okay, a few. Uh, just to know then if I can I need to go more into the details about the framework. But the framework is here. If you see these uh, researches from version one, it's available every year. 
And uh, this is the latest one, and it says pretty much that whenever we are scaling agile, whatever that means, uh, safe is the most used framework to support that. And it's by far, it's almost double the second of the second scrum scrums, and people don't know what they are doing. Maybe not even me. But um, the safe is the most used one. So what I've seen is big orgs really uh, are choosing safe uh, as, as their scale uh, framework. And that's safe. Simple, isn't it? Easy to understand. This is the full picture. So you can see here, it's the full safe. We have everything in front of us to be agile in scale, isn't it? It's easy, right? This, by the way, it's what's pretty much sold whenever uh, organizations are going in favor of let's adopt safe. Th that's the picture that most of the comp sponsors are buying. This is the big picture. But what is really happening, the ones that I experienced, was this one here, which is the essential safe. It's the shorted version of safe. There are, I think, four or five different versions depending on the size and the value streams that you have. But what I've seen the most is the essential safe. Um, all right, just to give a view of what I gave at the beginning in safe, just plotting this on top of the, the big picture is pretty much what we have here. You can see the layers, what are the practices and things that we can apply in order you know, to implement safe. And here we have our value streams where we're gonna deliver value to our customers. And here's just for the sensor, essential safe. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is, as you can see, there are loads of practices and elements and a lot of things. Uh, you have heard about safe. I will try to explain the, the elements that I'm gonna go deeper. Uh, however, I can go through everything. We would possibly spend days here talking about that. And so I'm gonna focus the ones that I think it can bring a value to you if you are trying to adopt safe, the ones that you're gonna see whenever your organization decide to go to use safe uh, for scaling agile is the ones that you're gonna have like straight on, okay? And these notes that I would like to share. The first one is the PI planning. Who has heard about PI planning? Show of hands, just for me. So PI planning, PI planning stands for Program Increment Planning. So if we go back to this picture here, what I can say is we have one thing called Agile Release Train. And uh, this is at the program level, and then we have here teams of teams. So in other words, the, uh, the PI planning is our big sprint. It's a big sprint of two to three months, four to 12 weeks. And within this big sprint, this agile release train, I will have like the sprints at the team level. So think about PI planning as a big sprint where this is one of the teams that we work with. I used to go to US every two months for this big planning. This is the big room that we had, and a lot of people were there, and we get together from different teams looking for dependencies, planning, and all stuff for the next, in our case was for the next three months, and we would have, within this big planning, iterations of two weeks. So the teams would be de delivering in within iterations of two weeks. But for planning purpose, this is the PI planning, the product in program increment planning, where we have everybody within the room. You may ask, but ah, what about the teams are distributed? We can have a chat about that. Uh, in this case here, we, we could fly to US, so our company were, was affording this, and we would fly to US from Dublin to the US every three months to be in the big room. There were more people involved, they were in another room. Um, so what about PI planning? What I'd like to tell about PI planning. Uh, if you, you by chance start you know, joining a PI plan, uh, one thing that I've seen constantly misunderstand is, is the idea of commitment forecast. And I will link back to Scrum. 
do we commit to the sprint plan, to the sprint backlog during a sprint planning? Yes or no? Maybe. Questions? Silence. Do we commit to a plan, a fixed scope? Or should we? Should we? What about the inspection and adaptation? We're going to learn as we go. So in this moment of the PI planning, it's the moment that we are getting all the teams together. We have an idea about the features that we want to deliver. We are finding out dependencies. But this is the moment that we know the least. We know something, but we're going to know more throughout the PI, throughout the big sprint, right? So rather than committing to a plan here, what I was always advocating for, we are forecasting work. But we are committing to the PI goal. What we are trying to achieve as of this big group here, what are our goals at this level? So here are two examples of boards. These are real ones from my teams. As you can see, one is a more higher level, in a more forecast way, because we were trying to find dependencies with other teams. That was our main focus, and that's what I've seen working better. And here, in this organization, we were going to much more plan-driven, try to slice things and have all these stories. And at the end, oh, we don't need to do the refinement throughout the PI, because no, all the work's here. It's just, let's do it, right? Uh, the other thing is the cross-dependencies. And that's one I see one of the main goals of the PI planning is if we are everybody in this room here, the idea is to find what are the dependencies that we have across the teams. Uh, I remember in Unfortunately, more than one PI planning, uh, we didn't find 10. I'm going to repeat 10 dependencies to deliver one feature that we, our team was supposed to deliver. And when I mean 10 dependencies, with 10 different teams, OK, you can say, maybe we have a problem here. You know, It was the organization that we were you know, working in. So I will go in favor of, let's see and have product delivery teams. Let's try to bring people from the other teams and create our own team with all the skills in here. So there's less dependencies. Uh, the, the organization was not mature for that level. And uh, OK, so let's talk with the other teams to try to manage these dependencies. Out of 10, we had three teams in the room. And I asked, what about the other seven? No, they are not part of this PI. How do we want me to deliver a feature that depends on 10 different teams if they're not here? And the RT that we're going to talk very soon, it was pushing, you should commit to. How can I commit? This is a forecast. We are set to fail. So if I can summarize in here is the main goal is to find these dependencies. This is a program board. Whenever I have something on my team that depends to something with the other team, we can make this visual, right? So managing dependencies and trying to reduce dependencies is the main goal of that big event. And I would even ask, do you have everybody in the room, even before you go to PI planning, uh, can we make the PI shorter so we can learn more, inspect, and adapt? Uh, Avoid these silos. Can we maybe rearrange teams to really have less dependencies? Questions that should be asked in PI after PI, we should get better. Uh, yeah. And then we go for the PO sync and Scrum Scrum. Basically, we have this big, big planning, PI planning, and then we start our PI, which is our big sprint. And during the big sprint, uh, we have follow-up meetings. With Scrum, we have our daily Scrum, right? What is the daily Scrum for? Anyone? What is the daily Scrum for? Sync to inspect our progress towards our goal and adapt if it's needed, right? We have something from SAFE, which is a Scrum Scrum and that was, that was the idea of let's get together mainly Scrum Masters or uh, rep representatives of the teams. And what are the dependencies? Uh, is there any risk, risk, anything that we should discuss that's put, it, put it in dangerous our delivery? But instead, what was seen, I was seeing like a bunch of people, stakeholders from business, from teams. Can you see this picture? 
What can you see here? 49 participants. This seems unreal, but this is a picture that I took. There was 49 people in a 30-minute call to discuss about the progress. And the ones that we were talking the least were the scrum masters of the teams. So there, are, there is a bunch of stats report with stakeholders, and this happened in two different organizations. So this tells me, ooh, there is a problem. What we did is that uh, I work with the RT. Again, RT, uh, I will talk about the RT, but read as chief scrum master, the scrum master of the PI. Okay, we have scrum master of the teams, and the RT, release train engineer, is the, scrum, the chief scrum master or scrum master for the program level. Uh, and we worked together, and one thing I advised, and I was even talking to him and said, look, why? Why are you having this? What is the purpose? Because the problems that I have, the dependencies, the risk, are not being addressed. I'm just reporting to someone else. So one thing that we did, we canceled that meeting, we split in two, so PO stakeholders that would be looking more about uh, the progress of the release, or progress of the PI in terms of the features and deliveries, they would go for the PI sync. Scrum masters and maybe some uh, members of the teams would go for the Scrum Scrum and try to identify, okay, I need something from your team. Can, you know, are you gonna deliver in this sprint? How is your plan? Or if I'm gonna, now I have a new risk, I have a new dependencies that I, I didn't know, uh, how we can address that to take offline. And then things became much more smoother and much more uh, beneficial for us, for the team. So if you are in a situation like that, my advice is, Ask why. And for every meeting that you have in SAFE, and you may have a good amount, try to have a clear purpose. What is the outcome intended? And do we have the right audience? Maybe less or fewer audience may be more effective. So that, then working with RT, we ended up like having five or 10 in a call. Much more. And from 30 minutes, we were like doing 15 or 20 minutes. The other thing that people say, or even fair is say that, oh, but safe is not agile because it just delivered every three months. Uh, uh, this I have to advocate for safe. It's not that at all. So this agile release, release train that this big sprint that I mentioned is between eight, eight to 12 weeks. But as we have in sprints in Scrum, it should finish whenever it ends. Right? Uh, one of the organizations that I worked, we were doing this very well. And we were even releasing much earlier than three months. And I'm gonna tell you what made us to release more frequently. Uh, but it's, on the other hand, I worked in a different one with different teams that we would actually do in development up to here. Okay, here we finished, we demoed, system demos, now we're gonna go for new PI planning, new work, right? All right, and then suddenly we will see regression test, validation, helping with support, deployments, a lot of work just popping up during the next sprint. Uh, what we can do about that, and we did in one of uh, the programs that we, we, we run, I'll go for the second topic first. We invested a lot of uh, technical excellence, DevOps. So we could, we automated, we automated all our process. So we could go from almost dev to production, like automatically, like deploying, continuous deployment, continuous delivery if you wanted. We had like even blue green deployments for availability, deploying production. So of course that cost money and time, but that reduced from deploying every three or four months to deploy monthly and monthly because the business asked us to deploy monthly because we could deploy every sprint or even shorter, but the customers didn't want so frequent because there was some work involved on the side. That was really nice, but we definitely focused a lot of here. We had sponsors that helped us to create this environment. And the other thing is we have a system demos. What are system demos? System demos are like the sprint review, but with all teams together. If we have 10 teams here, we're gonna have an event where the 10 teams will demo the integrated piece of software. 
And in the case that we had like validation, regression, and all this stuff happening, we were just trying to integrate in the last sprint of the PI. Like after 12 weeks of work, we were really integrating like between the 10th and the 12th. And guess what? Imagine about the environments, the sandbox, nothing was working. And we had to ask to extend or roll over things. It was a nightmare. So folks on technical excellence as soon as, as you can, OK? And then here we have our release train engineer. See the guy that does the, the, the response before the train. Have you heard about that, that term? Release train engineer. No? Yes? Maybe? Uh, uh, we can call that person like the chief scrum master. Is the scrum master of the PI of this big sprint. Collaborates a lot with the scrum master of the teams, but also with the old stakeholder, other stakeholders. And I see this position as very, very key. Because it deals and has influence, broader influence with the teams and with the stakeholders at program level and maybe even the strategy. However, um, I don't know why, at least the two organizations that I work with, um, we're talking about three, three programs, three different products or value streams that I was working with. In two of them, they like a lot to rotate and change the really strange engineer. So, and it wasn't even midway through the PI. I don't know why they like doing that, but it was very bad for the PI. Uh, other thing, which is about the two-day training and I put like addictions, but I, we can call behaviors. The most of the chief, the, the, the RTs were former program managers, maybe project managers, and uh, they attended the two-day training and then they were now RTs. So you, you are saying that project managers can't be RTs or scrum masters or program managers? No, I'm not saying that at all. But there's a big chance that we're going to keep the behaviors that we've been doing for maybe 10, 20 years in this new role. A two-day training, it was in one of the talks that uh, was, I think, his talk. And um, a two-day training won't make you a master in Scrum, right? So a two-day training won't make you a release train engineer that has a lot of, you know, a if it's Scrum Master, is complex, imagine something like even broader, right? But what we can do about that? Um, here, uh, I will bring here the COPs, and this is something that we did and helped a lot, including Scrum Masters and, um, and the RTE, RTEs. And we got together and we started discussing how we could do better at team level, program level, PIs, and so on. And this is a picture of something that we did. Uh, I facilitated that session. Uh, we tried to create our own user story. And based on our user story, our purpose, we came up with a lot of ideas in how we could meet and fulfill that user story, or that purpose. And that became our backlog. We would get together every week or two and then uh, we would try to implement this change, share knowledge, and so on. And I felt that the RTE was much more engaged, ha happier, because now he or she was understanding better uh, what's going on and supporting Scrum Masters. And there was, there was like a two flow, two ways of communication and alignment. That was really cool. One thing then. I'm going to say about the SPCs. SPCs are the safe program consultants, which I am one of them. So I will criticize myself as well. Uh, the SPCs could support this, even the implementation of safe in the organizations. But sorry if there's anyone here. I'm talking about me. I don't think that by being an SPC guarantees that that person really has the knowledge to do or to support like a big organization doing the whatever transformation that they are doing. Because I do believe I had went through the process to become a trainer, this SPC, and I do believe that the bar is too low. 
right? Uh, comparing to other maybe organizations, still certifications, still like a money factory, a lot of money around, but some bars are higher. And my feel is that for both become a SPC and even the other parts, the bar is a bit low. I do believe or do I would like that safe just put the bar up would help out to be more effective. And uh, to get to the basics is in terms of scaling, having all the stuff is if you're not doing like something within the teams, if you're not even able to deliver like frequently, uh, we are inspecting, we are not adapting, uh, the teams are really not running as a team, when we scale, we start having problems. So even with the RT, sometimes it's good to focus and get their help to get the basics proper done or the teams running a bit better before we start looking like bigger things that may not have that impact that we need because the teams are not ready at that moment. So, by the way, this every PI thinks you come, you, you start from chaos, and then you start normalizing. It starts getting better. I've heard from the, the community that it takes about one to two years to to save start running smoothly, smoother. So one of the products, programs that I work with, in fact, was after a year about four PIs that things get got better. Um, now I, I, I'm criticizing a bit safe. I think this is less light. <laughs> um, one thing about safe that bothers me a bit is it is to sell, but it gives a false sense of security, I think. But it, 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 it's, it's much more complex, much more complicated. And here's why. Uh, during the training, we were given this roadmap, right? And as a consultant, now I have a roadmap where I can go to organizations. There we go. It's just to apply that. At the end of the road, we are agile. That's it. Do you believe in that? It's like everybody applies this roadmap and all problems sorted. Yes, of course. No, why not? That's the, a lot of people are making money, you know. But I don't. I do, I do believe that you know it, it's it's much. These recipes are complicated in this complex world. So, giving a roadmap, a lot of things in here that generate a lot of complexity. It's easy to sell because then, of course, in in Scrum or other frameworks, or even Kanban, there's no row, or Scrum, there are three rows. And then people look say, okay, where am I here? In Scrum, I don't see myself, I don't see manager, I'm a program manager, or I'm a VP, where I am here? Whenever you bring this picture, you can say, ah, no, okay, you are a business owner, I can see myself here, right? I can see all the dots connect here. It, it's easier to sell, but the complexity involved, in my opinion, it's, it, it's very high. And we are adding too many layers to getting far from the, the basics. The lean approach. Safe is, is supposed to be lean. And we, every time that we are adding more roles, more events, actually we are getting far from the lean principles. And I do believe that somehow we have to go back to the principles. They are important. The frameworks are just means to something else, right? Uh, this point, I do believe that's heavyweight. It's hard to understand, even during the trainings that I've attended, and I've attended three trainings, uh, there, there are misunderstandings, even within the trainers, what the, the things me, means and uh, what they are supposed to do. It's too complex. By the way, to know how many elements, I'm comparing a lot to, with Scrum, because I think it's the most known, to know how many elements does Scrum have? Official elements, like when I'm calling elements, is divided in three groups. Each group, like roles, events, and artifacts. How many? Anyone? Just give me a number. 26, no. Three roles, Scrum Master, PO, Dev Team. 
Eight? Three. So three. So how many events? Four? OK, sprint planning, daily scrum, retrospective, review, and this sprint self. So wait, what are the artifacts? I'm talking about safe, but review in Scrum. Sprint backlog, product backlog, and the increment self. We're talking about 11. Just 11. It's easy to understand. Is it easy to master Scrum? Why are you having this school? That's it. And we are talking about 11 elements that are set in the boundaries of the framework. There's no official number, but I tried to do the work in here. I counted how many elements there was that were here in the essential one. 30, 30 plus. And from 11 to 30, we are not talking about three times more complex, because complexity goes like an exponential way. If we are talking about the full implementation, I ended up like in 60 plus elements. So it, it is, for me, an unreal complexity, right? Very complicated. So that's why I, 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 I tend to go to more to the basics, and I would like more something more organically resilient in terms of evolving an organization. So what? What we can do about that? If I can give you a, an advice, it is use it as a framework. I've heard so many times, because safe says dot, dot, dot. It's like a, a Bible. It happens in Scrum as well. Like a Bible, because Scrum says, do this. I use this in my favor, I have to be honest, as a tip. Sometimes I would like to convince someone not to change it, and they were not changing. I would say, you see, in safe here, we have this meeting. We, 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 there is one PO syncing in Scrum Scrum. We don't do this together. There are different purposes. I used this in my favor, but I've heard so much is because Scrum says. And this is, I see that they are looking for methodology. Methodology is like a recipe or a set of procedures. If we apply those procedures regardless of the context, I will get the same outcome. Can I apply the same practices and all the things that I have in my context, on your context, and will I get the same outcome? Not at all. And that's what I'm saying, use this as a framework. I use this as a, a nice toolbox. I, I really like it. I'm working with an organization. We are looking at the value stream to become more lean, and we are using Kanban with that. And I, I do like the idea of uh, the guard rails and the rise of investment. I took from here, and we are using with Kanban was really nice. I'm using it as a toolbox for me, but always trying to expect and adapt. Why are we using this? What is the purpose? Try, learn, and try the next step. And I do believe if you're gonna start with your organizations, start small, start with the essential, and then try to evolve it. Don't go too big, because it's gonna be much more complex. And I have one on the slide after this one that can explain what can happen. So the final message is, regardless of the means that you're gonna use, it won't do the heavy lifting for you. You need to find out there's no silver bullet. I think that we all know that, right? It's not because you are using safe, Scrum, Kanban, or whatever, that you're gonna get the outcomes. It's literally the work that we do during this. This is the means that will make us in a better position or not. And, I like this here. What happens if you have a problem or an issue, you scale it? What is the outcome of that? If you have a problem and you scale a problem, you're gonna have a bigger problem, right? If our teams are dysfunctional, let's scale everything. If we can't deliver like uh, working software after two or three weeks, let's scale it. We have a lot of technical debt, let's scale it. What is going to happen with a bigger problem? Look at this building. This is back in Brazil. Uh, and they scale up that. What happened? Oops. This is what happens when you try to scale without a good foundation. 
right? So if I, give, I can give you another advice is, if you try to, you are scaling up and you are facing too many issues, things are too complex and it's going to it's creating much more problems than uh, outcomes. Scale it back, down, try to fix in there, try to evolve in there, set a good foundation, and then scale back up. And that's all, folks. Thanks a lot for your time. <laughs> we have time for questions. Yes, oh. and the questions are on the Mentimeter. What are the worst parts of SAFE? Reasons for all the hate that it gets. Uh, I'm going to be extremely frank in here, my opinion is. Uh, the things that made me, make me a critical of SAFE frequently. The first, uh, I do believe that there are two more to folks now on certifications and getting people just, you know, come to our training after three days, they give a recipe and then here you go, go off and do it. Uh, so the bar is low. They claim to have more than, I'm not sure if 400, 4,000 uh, consultants around the world in more than 110 countries. So I, I do believe that this is a bias, not too much certification. This is one. And the other one that I can say is it's complexity, right? Uh, in Agile, Lean, it's all about like trying, learning, you know, evolving. And here you have like more kind of recipe that's heavy. And uh, we, ha we tend and we can easier fall in the same trap that keep doing what we were doing just with different names. That's, that's uh, the, the reasons that I see from my side that make me a, a, a cri to criticize a good bit of safe. Uh, I do believe that in this sense, if we are talking about methods and come in, in, in methods and frameworks, I do believe that Scrum and, 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 and Kanban you can evolve more organically and resi resiliently. Did I answer that? What do I have? How empirically is safe in our opinion? Um, at the end, it's all about people. How empirical are the people that are using it or that are applying this, that are supporting this? It's all about people. The, the, as I said, the, the framework won't do the have, have lift for you. So even in Scrum, how, how, how empirical is Scrum? It, all, everything that we have in Scrum is for inspection, adaptation, and transparency. Are all the teams empirical? when they are using Scrum? I bet no. Same will apply for safe. Again, with complexity, becomes harder because we have too many, we have role, we have uh, layers, roles, and a lot of uh, coordination. Then you get more tied to be empirical. But they claim to be, it's a framework. Framework should be based on empiricism. It's more about the people, I would say. Although I'm sure there are many reasons, but can you name one key reason from your experience why PI may fail to achieve their goal? Uh, <laughs> not have a goal. I, I barely see in three years having really a PI goal. The, the goal was let's deliver those features. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention one of the RTEs in one of the end of the PIs, at the end of the PI, you do confidence vote. So everybody votes from one to five. What is our confidence in terms of you know, achieving the goal, but that the moment is to deliver this bunch of features? And there were some two or a few twos and three, four, whatever. And she just said that, sorry, she or he. Uh, if you put three, four or five, that means you are committed to, if you need to work over time, weekends, regardless of what happened, we, you have, you are committed to deliver this. Uh, that's, not, that's not the goal. That wasn't the goal at all. Uh, and I do believe that we have to go back to product vision, uh, what is our really goal. Vidas is here. 
Oh, he was here. Uh, the talk that he did at the beginning about having the purpose, the big purpose is important, but I haven't seen much having the PI goal as I don't see much having the sprint goal. We always we are always focused on the plan, not on the purpose of what we want to achieve. So could be this. What kind of advantage and advantages versus less? Um, I won't be able to answer that because um, I just have an overview about less. I know a bit more about Nexus framework, the one that I, I study a bit more. So about less, I, I don't know much, so I would be having a bias or I, I won't be able to answer this one here. There are for sure people more qualified than less, trainers and so on, they'll be able to answer why. But my understanding is that somehow it's Scrum on top of Scrum, right? They try to have this idea that Scrum on top of Scrum. I have the impression that slider, it's, 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 it's more open, more framework, and you have to find out how to do, uh, how, how to create your own process, so your own methodolo methodology based on empiricism, but I would I would be able to really good, give a good answer in this one. If the company decides to implement safe framework, from what level the company should start training? From teams or top management? This can be good, depends how you use. Do you remember the roadmap that I showed you? So this is the roadmap is what safe advice to do. This is a roadmap. You start training change agents. You start uh, training executives, I can see here, up here. So first of all, the early adopters, people that will support the whole transformation or the safe adoption. And then the second step here, managers. And then you start training, uh, the art, defining the arts, training people. This is the good part, the idea of safe in this roadmap. The whole organization will be trained from managers to the teams. Everybody should attend the training. So in this case, According to SAFE, starts with management. So change agents, the people that will kind of support the group, that will support it, and then managers. Next, I'm not sure if I have time. I have two minutes. Got a point as a lean portfolio manager on the drawing. I'm too far away. Far up, yes. What are the ceremonies? As a lean portfolio manager, I think I have a, a bigger picture here. Yeah, there we go. Just to put everybody in here, Lean Portfolio Management is here on the top, right? Uh, you're going to be very linked to the value streams in here and the budget. Uh, the interaction that you're going to have is with the, the program level, but if you are attending something in here, I would even advise, I think it's very nice to attend system demos maybe, uh, but really the, the layers that you are looking for, uh, this is the, even with the large solution, most of the organizations don't have large solution. They have portfolio program and teams. So your, the uh, ceremonies that you're gonna attend will be here, the lean budget, uh, prioritization of teams and so on, and you're gonna have some influence here in the program level as well, but in a higher level. In, in I call like, we can see these are flight levels. Have you heard about the term flight levels? So the lower your flight is, more details you see, less, um, less broader is your view, right? As you go up, you can see less details, but you can see further horizon. So if you are here in Lean le le Portfolio Management, you are in more in the strategic part. Uh, if you are attending too many ceremonies that are the program level, then you, you kind of should review and focus more on this strategy part. It's worth to use safe with small organizations, six teams, but having many dependencies. My question is, no. No, I don't think, I don't think for six teams. Uh, even look at safe, they, they, they mentioned for, for a art, for a, um, but for a value stream, we should have between 50 and 125 people involved. For six teams, I don't believe that we reach that, maybe. 
let's suppose that 10 people per team is still 60. I do believe that there are other ways to solve this. Maybe I go, looking just at the question here, I like to call product delivery teams. Can we have product delivery teams? Maybe picking people from the other teams and having all the skills within this team here to start and finish a work? Can we start breaking our monolithic in more microservices where I can um, from here to there without depending much? We will depend, but not much. Maybe what you need here is a restructuring of your organization. I would go for that. There's a lot of overload, uh, overhead, a lot of overhead in meetings and bringing people together. You can do this distributed. It's a bit hard. I've done that. But bringing people together can be very expensive for you as well. So I would say try to create product delivered teams. Do you still have time? I'm going to keep going. Is it? <laughs> I can be here until night. With a pint of a beer all night. Is it possible to implement safe without any restructurization in a large organization? Uh, I, I, I would say mm, I do believe that's going to require some restructuring to restructure things. Because one, one example, that uh, the example that I said that we, had, we depend on 10 other teams to deliver one feature. This is the moment for me clear that we have a bunch of silos. And that would require really to get a benefit to restructure those silos. So, but this, is, <laughs> this goes a bit further because then uh, we are talking about, so we maybe remove some teams, Mixing orders, and this involves like people, and people usually is easy to deal and very hard. And when you feel kind of treated, can be very hard because some teams may disappear. So I, I, I barely would say you you can still you can have the roles, you can have the events and all the stuff, but I don't see that you won't get much benefit. You, you at some point you will need to. Discuss about that.